So one thing I've seen in common with most of the people that we see is there's some level of mold exposure, mold illness on top of that. So when they have this hidden fungal growth, it suppresses their immune system so they can get opportunistic viruses, parasite infections, bacterial infections, mm -hmm. throws off your microbiome, throws off your hormones, then you're not detoxing that well, and then just things start to build up from there. But what is the overarching driver of chronic infections? So one thing I've seen in common with most of the people that we see is there's some level of mold exposure, mold illness on top of that. So when they have this hidden fungal growth, it suppresses their immune system so they can op get opportunistic viruses, parasite infections, bacterial infections, mm -hmm. throws off your microbiome, throws off your hormones, then you're not detoxing that well, and then just things start to build up from there. Mm, the, the burden from our mold exposure starts off really affecting our white blood cells and then that's when the infections start really building up coming in? Part of it, I mean, the, the kind of the thing that I like to tell patients is, unfortunately mold is a part of our environment and its natural ability is to break down orga organic material back to the earth. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to survive and trying to grow optimally, that gets in the way of things. Right, so it's, it's literally growing breaking and degrading. apart, yeah. yeah. Wow, man. And, and, and we think about how many people are in contact with mold right. and how it's affecting us. And sometimes yeah. it's so subtle that you're just like, I just don't feel right ever since I moved to this house. And yeah. I don't know what it is. Right. So uh, how often are you seeing people go to your clinic saying, I'm really sick and you're finding them with mold? I'd say about 80% of the population that we see I suspect it, we run tests, we confirm it. I, I Actually, to this day, I, I haven't seen very many patients without mold somehow in their urine or blood. And so it seems like it's a pretty ubiquitous thing. And it's not healthy for us, but a lot of people do have it. And the people that we do see are those who are relatively on the sick side. Mm. And what does, what are the things that tell you, wait a minute, this may be mold? What are the telltale things that you see presented in patients? So there's usually some type of cognitive issue, whether it's brain fog, fatigue, weight troubles, uh, digestive issues, hair, skin issues. Um, and then they've tried various diets, they've tried various supplements, they've tried even antimicrobials, and they're just not getting better. And we just have to dig deeper and, and look, ask them about if they've had water damage or water damage exposure. Sometimes they can remember, sometimes they don't, but oftentimes there's a light bulb in the head and say, oh, I remember, there was a leak back there, never was addressed. Wow. And that's kind of when I started, you know, feeling sick. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny when yeah. they have that aha moment, they're it's like, like oh, dang. this is when it yeah. happened, yeah. right? That, that, that is so true when I was in practice, so true all the time. Yeah. And seeing how many people have mycotoxins in their urine, and you're like, oh, wow, and they're like, I just feel like I don't have short-term memory anymore. I can't yeah. remember anything. And I, yeah. you know, it's just, I can't remember small words even. Right. Word recall is really one of the big things that I used to see. So I love that we started off talking about mold. Right, right. I have my own story with mold. I saw a lot of people mm -hmm. with mold. But when it comes to infections, when someone has mold, right, yeah. when they're exposed to mold, what's a really common infection? What are we seeing that is brewing under that starts arising to the top? Well, the first thing is like candida. So you get candida growth, you get toenail fungus, that's a good sign that there's some type of fungal activity going on. And then also coincides with like parasitic activity. Parasite testing is pretty difficult though, so you can't really always find it, but oftentimes they'll have GI disturbance, which could be from bacterial, but also parasitic in nature. Mm. So in that case, there's, there's a wide variety of infections going on. Hey everyone, I want to talk about Birch Living. This is a partner I've been working with for quite some time now. Now sleep. Sleep is so important. I'm always excited to talk about Birch on my show because it's an awesome mattress. It's a premium mattress in a box company and they make mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, environmentally conscious. They're organic, non-toxic mattresses and they're made right here in the United States. And when it comes to a mattress, and the way that I looked at it, especially knowing all of the things that I do about environmental medicine and our exposures, I needed to choose a mattress that was organic and it had the natural materials that are gonna prevent me from being exposed to off-gassing chemicals for the life of the bed, something that is very much so common in many of the materials that these beds are made out of. Birch Mattress is Green Guard Gold certified. That is your gold standard to make sure that you're not being exposed to these nasty chemicals. I've had my Birch for about a year and a half now, maybe even two. 
And I love it. What I love most about it is how breathable it is, how cool I feel at night, how supportive it is to my body, all the pressure points, right? Nothing weighing down more than the other. Allergen and mildew resistant, especially important for someone like me who suffered with mold. And it's made of raw material sourced straight from nature. Now with your birch mattress, you're gonna get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 25 year warranty. So the best part about this is the birch is gonna come right to your front door, rolled up, ready to use. I love my Birch mattress and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash heal thyself to get 20% off of your mattress plus two free pillows. If you're looking for a mattress for your little ones, also check out the new Birch Kids line, highly recommended. All right, everyone, let's talk about something that I do for my health every single day. I started taking AG1. And it's not because I wanted just more energy, although I got some more energy. It's because I needed something that was easy for me to take every single day when I'm on the go that is going to give me those nutrients that are coming from fruits and vegetables. AG1, it doesn't taste super healthy. What I mean by that is it doesn't taste earthy or like dirt, like so many of these green powders taste, but it has a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to having every single morning. So what is it? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens to help you start your day right. It contains less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, artificial anything, and it still tastes good. And it supports better sleep quality and recovery and also your overall mental clarity and alertness. Now, AG1 is a small microhabit, and it's got big benefits. It's the one thing you can do every day to really start taking good care of yourself. Now, right now is the time to reclaim that health, especially as we go into the summer. You wanna feel good being in the sun. You wanna feel revived. You wanna make sure you're getting all the necessary nutrients as you are becoming more and more active. AG1 is one of my favorite things out there. Now, to make it easy, AG1 is gonna give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D. And you're going to get five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash heal thyself. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash heal thyself to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So someone is, has got a moldy house and how does... I know Candida has some a really wide range of what it looks like. Yeah. But what do you commonly see for when you're like, this person has a fungal overgrowth aside from the toenails? Um, sugar cravings. <laughs> yeah, First big thing, sugar yeah, cravings. Yeah, big sugar cravings, they just always want, always want to eat sugar. Basically, the yeast inside them or parasites create a chemical signal that makes you want to eat the sugar. So you're just feeding them so they keep propagating. And then so that's a good in indicator. But also like weight gain or, or sluggy, sluggishness overall general, just general fatigue. They're just not concentrating, can't remember things. Mm. That's a good sign that there's something causing some inflammation in their body. Mm. So when we're exposed to these mycotoxins, theoretically this person that sure. I'm picturing living in a home that's moldy, yeah. now the opportunistic infections like candida, they start overgrowing and right. the parasites, if they had them already, they're, they're getting stronger. Yep. And now they're like, give me some sugar. We're feeding them, mm -hmm. they're, they're propagating, they're getting, there's more and more and more and bigger overgrowth. Are there any other viruses then at that point that are just activated too? Oh yeah, so then bringing it to the next point is Epstein-Barr is a big one that we, we see a lot. And usually Epstein-Barr is, is a part of our virome. You know, we do get it when we're young and not, not often we have symptoms. Some people do get the mono symptoms, um, but some people don't. And then after a while, if they get exposed to mold and they have these other things, their immune system suppressed, they're eating the sugar, then the viruses reproduce and start propagating. And that's when you had another resurgence of fatigue, or this might be your first resurgence or resurgence of fatigue. But now you're dealing with Epstein Barr or uh, cytomegalovirus or the shingles, you know, or herpes. That's all as a result of your immune system just dealing with multiple fronts here. Wow. So imagine how compromised I'm thinking to myself, how compromised so, mon so many people's immune systems are. Mm -hmm. um, what are some other factors aside from living in a moldy home that has water damage in the ceiling, in the basement, and then all of a sudden in the kitchen, under the cabinet? Yeah. What are some other things that are really burdening our immune system? Because so many people are really sick with these infections. Oh, so besides the mold, I mean, there's stress from life in general. Mm. 
uh, EMFs, toxic exposures, chemical, heavy metals, you know, all the things that we're exposed to just from living in, in a big city here, mm -hmm. all the foods. So those don't help our immune system at all. And then some of the toxic emotions that we might carry. So, you know, you, you might have had some traumas that just don't get resolved that keeps you in a fight or flight mode. So your body's always in like, like defense, but it can't defend from everything because there's too many things to defend against. Right. Yeah. So when we're in that sympathetic dominance, what's happening to our immune system? Our immune system gets on the back burner. You're just mm -hmm. trying to survive, but all these other things are then thriving because your body just can't fight all everything at once. Okay, so now I'm thinking about this patient, right? Mm -hmm. They're stressed, there's a massive toxic load, they're holding on to emotional trauma, and they got a moldy house. Yep. It sounds like the average person in LA and New York City and all the big, big cities, cities, right? right? Yeah. Um, Co-infections happening, and they come to you, and they go, hey doc, I need, I need help. What are some really powerful things, because they've been trying all the diets, sure. all the supplements, nothing's helping, where do we go next for this okay. folks? So we start with the basics, you know, make sure that they're eating healthy as possible. Like they're intaking uh, organic foods, minimally processed foods, just so that they're not adding more junk to their existing burden. But then we focus on their detox and elimination pathways. So we want to get their liver optimized, their kidney optimized, their colon, as well as their skin and lymph. So the simplest thing that I tell most moldy patients to deal with is doing coffee enemas. It's a pretty dramatic thing, sounds pretty crazy. I do it myself but it really works. You know, you're optimizing the, the liver, gallbladder, and intestinal pathways to get rid of as much of the toxins in the shortest amount of time possible. Mm. And coffee enemas for some people are like, whoa, I've never heard of <laughs> right, that. Right, right. I, you know, some people, oh, yeah, I may have heard of it, but I don't want to try it. Sure. But you're saying that it's activating the liver, gallbladder for detoxification. Right. Um, and, and what's happening is when we're exposed to these mold mycotoxins, they're going through the liver. Yes. And, and it's saying, hey, liver, I got you. Let's work together. Mm -hmm. Let's get rid of it. And you've seen people do better with that. Right. So the, the, the roadblock that usually happens is if the liver's processing all the different toxins, a lot of the mold toxins that get processed from the liver, they actually become quite sticky. So they can actually get dumped in the gallbladder, and they cause like more of a sludgy gallbladder. Mm -hmm. So and then you may end up getting gallstones or just inability for the gallbladder to dump the bile acid into the intestinal tract. So what, then, what ends up happening is then you back up and then that liver now can't process as much because there's overwhelm there. And then at that point, people start getting back up with the symptoms. They'll get sensitive, very, very smells. They can't process all the lights, you know, mm -hmm. sounds. They're just overwhelmed with toxins, you know, and they, they feel fatigue. Anything triggers them really easily. So that's an indicator that they're just backed up. That's so, really, really something yeah. to think about because right. how many of those you know, symptoms that you just mentioned or, or what we see, those experiences, we go, wait a minute, that sounds like me. That sounds like me. I, I, I have that sensitivity right, and, I'm, right. and I'm just super like feeling tired and really struggling here. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, we got, we got this colon cleanse, yeah. this enema that we do, right? Sure. <laughs> um, how often are people who are really sick, are they recommended to do it? Um, is it like an everyday thing? If they is can it tolerate, monthly? it can be every day. You know, oh, wow. we can work it up to that. And some people can't do it every day. They can do it uh, once a week or so. Um, as you get used to it, you can handle more. And you can always start off with a lighter blend of coffee, or you can just, for those who are sensitive to coffee, you can just do saline enemas to get things moving. Wow, easier. Now, is it any type of coffee? Uh, no, <laughs> you want to get like an organic mold-free coffee. That's just, I mean, you could use any coffee, but then you're just retoxing yourself with what's getting coming in. So. Right, right. You want to yeah. get the cleanest of the clean. Sure, yep. All right. Uh, now, these coffee enemas, which I haven't really talked about much on the show, okay. you're saying can be very powerful. Right. Um, is there a role then, let's talk about like parasites, for example, sure. right? Okay. A lot of people suffer with parasites. Right, right. Is there a role for... At what point do we go, okay, I need to take medication now. Now I need like big, big guns. When it's really, really bad or is it, is it early on on a low dose? How do we start integrating that world? It depends on the patient's tolerance and how bad they're suffering with symptoms. If, they're, if their symptom burden is really high, we may not start off with the antiparasitic medicines yet because they may not be able to tolerate that that. Uh, dose. Mm -hmm. So we can always start off with some of the herbals first. They're a little bit easier and gentler and you can adjust that strength. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make sure that they're eliminating well. Because if you kill off a bug, a parasite, and you're not pooping it out, you're going to feel much worse. Yeah, they got to be going they to the gotta be, Yeah, they got to be pooping. Okay. 
I want to go into parasites because okay. there's a lot of people who have them and sure. maybe don't even know. What are some major symptoms that, oh crap, I might have a parasitic infection? Okay, so there's grinding of the teeth, there's some anxiety, irritability, insomnia, depression, uh, cravings of sugars and sweets, and then there's this bloat in the gut that doesn't really go away, and weight gain, they can also have joint pains, skin issues, eczema is a big one. So those are all, those are signs and symptoms of, of parasitic infections. Kind of a broad thing, it just looks like a lot of other things too. Right, right, yeah. and, and I remember when um, one of my first ever patients in, in school, the kid had anal itching. Uh-huh. Oh, that's a good one too. That was, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, like, like that one, And yeah. I said, oh, okay, whoa, we, this, we need to yeah. test for this. But you said not all parasite testing is good. Yeah. Um, how does someone who suspects they have a parasite, where, where do they ask their doctor? They can ask for a testing. The, the common testing is like your, your stool analysis. They can do one day or, or three day. Oftentimes, if the parasites aren't being eliminated or the eggs aren't found in the stool, then you're told that you don't have any parasites. Oftentimes, the parasites don't eliminate very well in the stool. They're latched onto the intestinal tract. So you're not going to find that, you know, in this case, or they're st stuck in the bile films and they're not going to be detected on, under the microscope. Is that why they're so stubborn to get yeah. rid of? We can't just, we don't just poop them out. They stay in our body they for a while. They stay in our body. Yeah, it was free rent, free food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and can it be for many years? Are people suffering with parasitic infections right. 10, 20 years? Yeah, oh yeah. We've had patients that they've gone to like, you know, the Bahamas or they've gone to like a tropical country. They remember getting parasite. They, they were treated for it. But 10, 20 years later, the symptoms still remain. And it comes and goes, but it's never really gone. Wow. So it's not until we finally treat it that they're actually, their poop is finally well formed, they're pooping well, you know, they're actually losing weight or they're clear headed again. Wow. And, and, and when it comes to parasite cleanses now, parasite mm -hmm. detoxes, there's so many, right? Right, right, right? I go right now to Whole Foods, you and me walk in there, we're going to be like, there's one, there's one, oh, there's another one, right? right? Are they all created equal? Do they work? And what do we really need to look for when we're treating ourselves from parasitic infections? Good question. They all have a handful of common ingredients like artemisinin, wormwood, uh, uh, cloves, or something like that. And in those herbs, they generally are, are reported to work pretty well. So it just depends on the blend. Some of them are stronger than others, and some of them, you know, if you have resistance in those, those herbs, then it's not going to work very well. So if, it, if you've been taking it and you don't feel any dramatic benefit, then it may not be the one that you need. Um, and that's why we oft, often use the herbs plus anti-parasitic uh, medications as well if needed. Mm. You just mentioned off air though. Yeah. You, you mean to tell me there's a parasitic medication that has little to no side effects? Right. What's the name of this one? We have to know. This is Alinea. Okay. Nit nitinoxazide is the generic name. And you use this one in conjunction with parasitic cleanses yes. or, or right. when you're working on these programs with people, right? Yeah. And, and what does it do? So it, it blocks the uh, replication ability of the parasitic organism. So basically, you just cut off their ability to reproduce. It, so they're about to make babies, then they can't, and they go, my generations are it's done, over. and, and they, I die. And then they die off. And then you poop them out. Generally, yeah, you poop them out. <laughs> so you know, you know, a lot of people, uh, they love the videos, uh -huh. or, or they hate them. Oh, they either sure, love sure. or hate where you're just pooping out and there's all these parasites, right? They right, go, I right. just did a cleanse. Are they usually parasites or are they sometimes mm, like... Rarely, rarely. They like, rarely are. Yeah, they're rarely parasites. Most of them are the biofilm colonies, the mucus colonies that are being released. So if you separate them apart, you might be able to see parasites under a microscope. But most of the parasites we're talking about are single cell organisms. So you're not going to visibly see them under the microscope. Mm -hmm. For worms, that's another story. There's, there's like tapeworms and roundworms, hookworms. Those might need different drugs. So those are actually multicellular organisms, and you'll, you'll actually see those coming out when you do. Wow, and, and it's funny because uh, I've seen the biofilm, and people are yeah. like, oh my god, worms are coming right, out right, of right. me, right? <laughs> and then, but then I've seen tapeworms, and I'm like, oh, that's alive. Yeah, you'll see like it actually a square structure, like it's like stacked on each other. Yeah, 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 they're alive, and they're moving, and they're like, mm -hmm. I, I'm really mad that I left my yeah. host. Yeah. I need some food <laughs> ASAP. Those are worse. <laughs> those are worse. Okay, so. Uh, very insightful because uh, so many people ask me, how do I know if I have parasites? What do I do if I have parasites? So uh, really empowering to know, okay, sure. yeah. that we can do that for ourselves. But what if, if someone suspects that they do have a worm, uh -huh. right? We're not, not, we're not talking about single yeah. cell now. Worm, multicellular. 
How, how, it, that can't be tested for, can it? It's a bit harder to test. That one you can sometimes rely on antibodies, so you can do blood antibodies for the, the worms, mm -hmm. and then the, those might show up. Or actually, there's saliva antibodies for those as well. Mm -hmm. So you're more likely to be able to detect that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, usually if you're pooping it out, unless it's actually dying off at you, it's very unlikely to show up in your stool. Wow, yeah. it, it, it's, it's, re it's just really powerful yeah. to think how many people, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to now, as we switch gears, a lot of people suffer with things like Lyme. Mm -hmm. A lot of people suffer with the co-infections that come with Lyme. Why are people suffering for so many years not getting better when they have a Lyme infection? So one thing I've noticed that ties in why they're still dealing with Lyme disease is they might still have mold in their system. Wow. So their immune system is being suppressed, or they might have heavy metals, or they might have emotional blockages. These are things that just are thorns at the side of the body trying to get better and trying to, trying to fight the infection. Lyme itself is a difficult one to treat because it, it can evade the normal immune system. But when you already have the immune system bombarded by all these other things, it makes it a much harder way to treat. Mm. You know, the traditional way you treat Lyme is with antibiotics, but the antibiotics can only work so far if the immune system is not doing its fair share of work. Right. So if you got these other things working on, then it's, it's a hard battle. <laughs> and it comes back to what you said, the stress, the emotions, the food, yeah. The movement, right? right? All of the like yeah. foundational things first. Yeah. Before, how many people go? I have Lyme. Give me antibiotics, right? Yeah. But not doing the foundational right. things that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so in your clinic, you got some exciting things going on there, right? Yeah. You got some good technology. Yeah. And this is this has always been an interest of mine. I, I worked for a year in a regenerative clinic, but I was doing the naturopathic foundational stuff. Sure, yeah. So I didn't really get to go behind the curtain and see all of the fun stuff. I saw a little bit of PRP, anti-aging. Yeah. We're going to get into longevity and stuff. C can you tell me what is one of your favorite devices that you sure. have in your clinic and why? Okay, so the, the, the one I'm having the most fun with right now is called the Weber Laser. So it's actually an intravenous laser. So it actually, there's a fiber optic cable that we thread through your normal IV line that goes inside your vein. So what we're able to do is we're able to access your vein and activate all the floating things in, in the blood, including your blood cells, pathogens, proteins, lipids, with light. So you're getting direct light into your actual system. Because the most of the light we have, your skin barrier, you know, you won't get through. So you can't turn on all the functions with it. But with the Weber laser particularly, you're able to access your vein and get different frequencies of light. We can get UV, blue, green, yellow, red, infrared, all inside your blood here. And, and what would be the point of all of that? So what's interesting is our cells are very responsive to light. So we actually generate energy from having light. And so this is basically supercharged light and in the form of laser is very focused energy and that's able to activate certain pathways of energy production in our cells, as well as detoxification pathways, anti-inflammatory pathways, and even antimicrobial pathways. Mm. So it's got, a, it's got a, a nice range, it's not just yeah. one target we so have. It's very tonifying, healing, and supportive for many things that you might need. So then naturally, you mentioned, can, is there any light in that laser that can create DNA damage? It's low-level laser, so our cells actually can utilize that. So it's mm -hmm. not like a heat laser where you're right. actually burning any tissue. This right. light actually has no heat generation with it, but it does. It excites the photons of energy inside our body that, that turns on all the natural functions. It's it's so so it's really remar remarkable. Yeah, safe. it's remarkable. Yeah, remarkably <laughs> and effective safe. too. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you know, uh, we we're talking off air. I'm going to document yeah. this. I'm going to come in. I'm going to have the light on me. You're yeah. going to give me. I want. I want the whole glow up. Sure. I want to sure. come out <laughs> glowing up. Uh, it's a lot of people talk about ozone. Sure. It, is ozone effective? There's different types of ozone. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, hey, doc, should I be getting ozone? Can we just clear up this sure. ozone mess right okay. now? Uh, does it work? Ozone works. It works. Hands down works. Yeah. And, and what does it work for? It works for any joint condition you can think about. So basically every organ of the body, we can absorb ozone except for the lungs. So don't want to inhale ozone because that will irritate the lungs. But for the rest of the tissues, Ozone is very unstable, so once it enters into our system, it breaks down to a free oxygen molecule plus O2, which is very stable. But that free oxygen molecule interacts with the water in our body, creating hydrogen peroxides. So the hydrogen peroxides are our body's natural ability to fight various infections, viruses, and also the free energy that's released activates very, various mitochondrial pathways, so you get gen more energy generation as well, too. Mm. So it's kind of an irritant when you put it in for a brief amount, but the body use that irritation to recognize that there's healing that's needed. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Like hormetic response. Yeah, right, right. So, so now there's people who go, okay, you know, they take my blood, because for people who don't know, yeah. they, your blood comes out, they, right. they ozonate it, mm -hmm. and then it comes back in your body. Sometimes they do it three times, sometimes they do it ten times. Uh, w which one should people be getting? Is, 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 it, is marketing all the way up to, is it like, oh, really, I don't need to do 20 times? Is one, is, is one enough? Or do some people need a lot more? Right. More is not always better. Depends right. on the patient. If they're already really stressed, they might not be able to handle many passes. So one is always a good place to start off with. You can gauge a person's progress. Those dealing with more chronic illnesses, they can ramp up eventually to more if they need. Um, when you have a higher a, a volume of ozone in the body, you do get more uh, activation of energy pathways as well too. Mm. So we can we can use that in conjunction with the laser in this case because the ozone is also light sensitive too. Mm. So you can actually enhance the full effect of ozone just by adding in a little bit of light. I love that light, man. I'm, I'm, I can't stuff, yeah. wait to see it. <laughs> Element is an electrolyte drink that you may have seen. They've gained a lot of popularity in the past year, and for good reason. It's got everything you need. That means a lot of salt and no sugar. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. It contains no sugar, no artificial coloring, artificial ingredients, gluten, or fillers. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited for your lifestyle if you're following keto, low carb, vegan, vegetarian, whatever it is, you're gonna need electrolytes regardless. Now it's important to replenish those electrolytes, whether you're in the sauna, working out, you just went for a jog, or you're waking up in the morning. It's really important to make sure you're replenishing. Now Element is awesome because a lot of the symptoms of electrolyte deficiency like headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness can be prevented. Now for me, when it comes to Element, I actually started off using it every time I came out of my sauna because I was losing a lot of sweat and needing a lot of electrolytes. I was really thirsty for even three, four hours after the sauna. So once I started using it, it was really helpful. But now it's became part of my day. Every morning I wake up, I have either the citrus or the orange. Those are my favorites. And I put it in my water. And then through the day, maybe I'll have the watermelon one. I found the flavors that I love. But Element has been a really helpful way for me making sure that I'm not depleted in my electrolytes, especially being active. Right now, Element is offering you, the Heal Thyself listener, a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packs, free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors and share Element with a friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash DRG. The deal is only available through my link. You must go to drinkelement.com slash DRG. Element is awesome. They offer no questions asked refunds. It's risk-free. If you don't like it, I think you will. But if you don't like it, you get your money back, no questions asked. You have nothing to lose. Now, I know you're doing all these things in your clinic, yeah. so I have, I have all these questions, right? I'm trying to yeah. cohesively ask them so they can flow, but I sure. just have them in my head. Yeah, what, <laughs> um, what if, what, look, I'm 38 years old, okay. right? Sometimes I feel not as energized as I used to be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm a little bit tighter in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go, oh my God, am I aging a little bit? Look at my, my hair is going gray now, okay. Sure. You do some longevity stuff. You do some anti-aging stuff. What is the real stuff and what is the myths out there? What's the really good stuff that is working to keep us young? Good question. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I want to know the I want to know the fact of the fiction. What's the, the the healthy stuff? Not only just for our skin, but like, yeah. what should we be doing on a regular basis? We should be cleaning out all the junk that we have. So definitely detoxing. That just goes to the basics. Is you don't want to age with all that damage that can occur from the toxins that we have in our system. Mm -hmm. So the one of the ways I tell people to do is fast regularly. Wow, you, okay, you love yeah. fasting. Autophagy is, is the name of the game here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if you can clean up all the old cells, it allows you to create newer, healthier cells. Our, our old, old cells don't serve us really very much after they've died off and turned over. They kind of <laughs> behave like zombie cells. So when they're zombie cells, they just linger around and create inflammatory signals that cause our other cells to react and also age faster too. So by the act of fasting, you're just cleaning up all the old damaged cells on a regular basis to kind of clean up the mess and start over again. And so that's a big move right now for, move, yeah. for staying young. Right. Listen, all of you who are trying to stay young, doing all the beauty stuff, first you got to think about, are you fasting, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> How often should we be fasting? 
Um, if you can fast, like intermittent fasting is a good starting point. I tell people after like 12 hours, after the first 12 hours, you start actually going to autophagy. Mm-hmm. So if you can get to like 14 hours a day, that's a good start, a couple hours a day. If you can do like 24 hours once a week, it's pretty significant. You get you know, a decent cleanup job on that weekly basis. On the more advanced scale, you can do like three to five days as often as once a month. Wow. Not everybody can do that. So you can do like once a quarter, a couple times a year. Yeah. You, you, know, you get a big significant change once you fast for that long. We had, um, do you, are you familiar with Dr. Russell Mars? Yeah. Yeah, he was on the show recently, oh, wow, nice. and we talked about yeah. fasting. I have his old nutritional book. Yeah, everyone yeah. had every naturopathic doctor. Yeah, yeah. He came on the show and talked about fasting, and he does a uh, five-day juice, uh-huh. uh, apple juice, but diluted, diluted, just okay, a little okay. bit, and it's just instead of instead of a pure water fast. Sure. And he, you know, this guy fasts four times a year, and yeah. he he's old school. Uh-huh. Oh, he's literally old, but yeah. he's young. He does triathlons. He he swims all the time. Right. This guy runs. He biked a thousand miles in France. I'm like, holy moly! This guy's like 40 years older than me, 30 yeah. years older than me, and he's killing it out here, right. man. And that's that's how it has to be. And he loves the fasting, man. Yep. It cured his allergies, he said, uh, and which has been like really severe. So I'm totally on board with the right. fasting stuff. What else should we be doing? What are some of your favorite? foods or drinks that are helpful for our longevity? What's going to reduce our inflammation the most? Curcumin, phosphatidylcholine, foods. It's a blend. This is not, they're not, they're not actually like foods per se, but like it's, it's a blend of um, nutrients that support your glycocalyx. You familiar with that? Mm-hmm. So it's the internal membrane that protects our blood vessels themselves. So when you got leaky blood vessels, you have a lot of problems here. So there's a, um, I think it's a seaweed uh, called fucoiden. Mm-hmm. So that is, and there's a, several supplements that have it. In the Asian yeah. realm, it's pretty popular. But that particular material is used to build up some of the glycocalyx. Strengthen blood. your blood vessels. Yeah, strengthen the, the lining of your blood vessels. Very important. Yeah. Uh, so what about stem cells now? Sure. There, there, is there a controversy behind it? There's a lot of people who were doing stem cells, but they were not stem cells, and then the FDA said this, and then this, and they closed down. The... Sure. Where are we at in the stem cell game right now? So right now, the stem cells that are commercially being used are the mesenchymal stem cells, although they're still probably not fully like FDA approved in this realm. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the stem cells that people can actually market as stem cells are typically the ones that derive from your own cells, like your fat or bone marrow. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other products are just called biological allografts because they're de- biological tissue derived from usually umbilical cord or placental tissues. Mm. So those are products that can be used. And why are stem cells so helpful in our healing? Um, Because they're like basically the contractors on the job. So they are recruiting all the workers to come into the area. And then the workers then know what information that they need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lot of contractors, you can get more jobs done in the sites that you need. That's one of the most clear ways I've heard in such a long time. (laughs) I was like, oh, contractors. I love analogies. Uh, and, And what diseases do stem cells help particularly? Um, it can be used for a wide variety of illnesses. So for autoimmune conditions, chronic inflammatory issues, chronic infections, it just gives your body a fighting chance or ability to actually repair things that might normally take a long time if any to repair. And now the new thing everyone's talking about is exosomes. Now, is that the same thing as stem cells? Uh, exosomes are the particles that are derived from stem cells. Mm-hmm. So the st- stem cells, think of their like kind of factories. Exosomes are little offshoots of material or information from the actual stem cells. So it's like me handing you an envelope. That envelope has the information that's an ex- you know, from, from the exosome itself. And, and, and how is that? Is it working first and foremost? And, and how is it working? Uh, it does work. So the thing to clarify with exosomes is your body makes exosomes, cancer cells make exosomes, microbes make exosomes. So a lot of different cells make or exosomes. There's exosomes that are derived from umbilical cord tissue. That's the type of exosomes that we're using in the regenerative space. Mm. So the information that comes from those cells are young, pure, and, adul- and unadulterated, so they're healthy. So if you took a cancer stem cell and then you gave them those exosomes, those are not good. <laughs> right. So that's that's an important thing. Right. So they're, com- they're, healthy, they're healthy stem cells. And healthy information that's released from those stem cells. Which makes them a lot more safe than what we right. may theoretically think. Right. A lot of people have asked me about this weight loss drug. Will Govi and Ozempic. Yeah. Okay. First and foremost, I want to know 
generally speaking, is it safe? Does it work? And who are the people, what are you seeing in your clinic? Sure. As far as I've used it, it's relatively safe. I've had patients that have nausea that have had to stop. But that's like one in like 100 here. But most of the people, they can tolerate the symptoms. They'll get nausea, dizziness for maybe a week to at most a month. And then afterwards, they can tolerate it. Um, but it works. The biggest thing is I've used a lot of different things over the years to help people lose weight. We clean up their diet, help them detox mold, clear up parasites, and they still got weight. So this one actually moves the needle. And it's very rare that it has something that works that easily without people having to try it. What, what, is, hap what is happening then? Why? Because you do, when I hear you doing, yeah. that's exactly what I would do or right. something that we're along those lines. Why are people not losing the weight? Is it a blood sugar issue? Sometimes it's a blood sugar issue. Sometimes it's the dietary habit themselves. Sometimes they're just overeating or they're getting too many calories more than they can tolerate. Sometimes it's how the body actually processes the calories. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed is with the ozempic or the semaglutide is that people actually don't have to try, but their appetite's not there. And then if you can stop some of the habit loop of overeating or just subconscious eating, then they actually lose weight. You know, they just stop eating. You know, they stop snacking subconsciously. Right. right. And they can shift that balance right there. You know, w one thing that was that you know, there's five million hashtags or five million posts on the hashtag Ozempic Face. Do uh -huh. you know what that is? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's basically just weight loss face, yeah. but it's like there's articles written about it. It is like the trendiest viral thing right now that's happening. Um, have you ever seen any clients have, you know, the gaunt face from using Ozempic when losing well, too much weight? Well, for me, is I don't endorse the like, rapid weight loss. Yeah. You know, so we, we we taper it so that they're losing weight. And the average weight is only like a pound to at most two or three a week. But oh. once one pound a week is pretty doable. So you're not losing that weight that fast. You're not losing muscle with it. So you can maintain that. So you're doing it more responsibly because there's people Correct, who are yeah. losing eight to 12 pounds a week. Yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> oh, okay, do I that. see, I see. Yeah. Okay. So all of our weight loss is more gradual, which is sustainable, it's too. It's how it should be. Yeah, it's how it should be. Because I, I was watching uh, this video of this girl who just got off of the Ozempic, and her weight came back, like in three months, yeah. you know? And she lost, it was. It went down, and then now it went back up. Right. And loose skin, mm -hmm. gone face, subcutaneous fat's gone, right? It's yeah. like, whoa, you know, like, yeah. was this worth it all? Right. But I love that the, that it's, it's slowly taper, going slow. Yeah, we're, we're trying to address the root cause of the weight to begin with, so as we're addressing that, when they lose the weight, they can stay off. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of women ask me now, sure. on the DMs, is microneedling worth it? Should I be microneedling? What is microneedling? Sure. And now I can forward this question to you, because okay. I know you know a lot more about it than me. Okay, cool. Well, microneedling does work. Basically, with any regenerative thing in the body, when there's an injury response, the body does its work as it's meant to do. So when you microneedle the face, you're creating micro, you know, micro trauma to the face, and then you're recruiting your own stem cells to go out there and try to repair things. So we can enhance the microneedling by adding PRP, which are the platelets from your body that normally help with cell repair. So you can basically get a better healing response with the PRP on the microneedling. One of the more advanced versions is using the stem cell exosomes that we talked about earlier, of microneedling those guys in. So if you microneedle your face and then throw in the stem cell exosomes, the healing rate of your skin is as if you are closer to being young again. Interesting. So like you're a baby, when, you, when, you're, when you're a baby, you bounce back and you heal from things overnight sometimes. Yeah. So when you add these things, it's like you, you're accelerating your normal, normal healing ability many times over. It, interesting because it's, it's done topically on the skin. Your skin yeah. is regenerating fast. Is it building collagen? Yes, so you're actually getting a remodeling process that recruits more collagen formation. So the youthful skin also is very dense and supple, and that's where you're actually increasing the health and the youthfulness of your current skin. That, that's, it's just amazing to hear the technologies that are out there, man. Yeah. We, like, when we think about where we are, where we were, and now people like, have access to something that makes them lose weight so fast, yeah. and, and they can make their skin look really young, and it's like we're reverse aging. When you work with these clients, now we have their physical reverse aging, their face looks young. How do we reverse the biological age? Good question. So the things that I've kind of started using a little bit is the, the drug rampamycin. Mm. You heard of that yet? Mm -mm. So there's a pathway that it works on, which is the mTOR pathway. But when your body's actively growing, it's using up resources, it'll age faster. 
So when you're shutting that pathway off, you can actually kind of mimic a fasting state in the body without having to fast. This is why Walter Longo talks about it. Yeah, so you're kind of cleaning up the old cells. That's the biggest way to kind of turn back the aging clock. The other things are using like NAD or quercetin, astragalus, a lot of those herbs. So those things do help in actually lengthening telomeres as such. You know, so mm -hmm. we utilize a different variety, variety of things to kind of slow down or actually reverse the aging process. But it goes back to the basics, and we want to make sure you don't have any heavy metals, chemicals, mold toxins, because those, those are constantly damaging your DNA. Right. You know? And right. you always have to repair it, so you're re using up resources to try to repair things. So it's, your cells are going to age regardless. Those are the big ones. Those are the big ones, yeah. Okay, and heavy metals now. Mm -hmm. This one thing you mentioned multiple times on this segment. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who go, okay, I think I have heavy metals. What's the best way to test for heavy metals? So the best way is through urine, but also provoked urine. Um, because you can do hair, you can do blood. They're only going to give you kind of a snapshot of the, the metals, but sometimes with blood, the limitations, it's only acute heavy metal exposure. Because most of the metals you're exposed to, they'll settle in your bones, your fat, your tissues, after sometimes a day, a few weeks. So by the time you check it, you don't know what your true burden is. Mm -hmm. So the urine test that we do, is involving two parts. One is a random urine sample, which lets you know any acute exposure so that you might be naturally excreting. And then we give you a challenging agent. This could be an IV or oral uh, medication that withdraws the metals from your tissues. And that gives you a better snapshot of what is possibly locked away. There's no really true, like, awesome test that tells you exactly how many metals you have, right. but it's the best shot you have at kind of getting an approximation of how much burden you might have. And how often are people having higher levels of heavy metal burden? Too often. <laughs> really? Yeah, a lot of patients will see lead and mercury are the top two that we see almost all, all the time. But there's now aluminum, cadmium, a lot of uranium in LA, uh, thallium. They're just popping up left and right, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it affects all the systems, but what are you right. really seeing the most systems affected by this? Um, neurologic and just your actual immune system's ability to fight things. Mm, man, I was just yeah. we're thinking about it's again yeah. like that's why you mentioned heavy metals, it's a rabbit hole, it's molds, so many things, yeah. all of the things. Right, where right. I, I, you know, I got my heart goes out to people's immune systems, man. Yeah, I just picture a bunch of soldiers running around, scattering, right. losing numbers by numbers, and trying to literally handle an atomic bomb. Yeah, um, but but it's really powerful for you to give us these fundamentals and even like supplements that we can take. You know, yeah. you reverse the aging, keep our immune system strong, build that yeah. resiliency. The emotional part is the big part. And yeah, it's a big part. We got to do that. What do you do to keep your emotions, anxieties, mental state in check? Me personally or for... for yeah, what do you do and for, and for patients? Oh, for patients, I, I have them work on things that can activate their vagus nerve, whether it's deep breathing, cold plunges, humming, yoga, something that just activates to, so that they have the calming side of the nervous system. Yeah. Oftentimes people forget about just breathing. You, know, you hold up your breath up here, you can't release any you know, of the stresses that you have on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So some of the, that works on the, more of your long-term, short-term resilience, and then often have them work on some of the deeper stuff. And this is introducing the, to the realm of psychedelics or ketamine mm -hmm. or... I mean, sometimes I send them out to like emotional release you know, practitioners. Like Doc G over here? Yeah, Dr. G. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very cool, yeah. man. And, and you're taking that holistic approach, right? It's like right. sometimes humming and cold plunge isn't enough if you've got right. some deep trauma, right? right? right. And, and this is where the power of something like psychedelics, ketamine, mm -hmm. emotional healing, that's, right. that's really, really powerful. It's just unlocking that trauma. It's exactly. easy to get out somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. So we, we're thinking about, okay, so mold, <laughs> the heavy metals, yeah. the traumas, the, the really poor eating, all of the things that we can really bring awareness to, mm -hmm. and it can make a big difference if we start right. doing that first before yeah. we spend a million dollars on supplements. Right, right. I love that. So is there anything that we didn't cover that you wanted to talk about? I want to talk about a lot of the structural aspects of people's health too. Mm -hmm. So you, if you've got joint pains, um, dysfunctional ligaments, tendons, fascia, it's hard for you to feel great, you know? Yeah. And your body's functionality will decline. If you can't move, then you're going to age faster as well, too. So th some of the things that we do incorporate regeneration of your joints as well, too. Mm. So, And what are those things? 
Well, going back to ozone, so actually ozone can be injected into the joints as well. Directly into Directly the joints? Directly into the joints, yeah. Wow. And, yeah. and it causes the hormetic response? Exactly, yeah. So it basically creates an injury response that your own cells are now aware of uh, that there's an injury that's required to pay attention to. So you're actually bringing blood flow, bringing nutrients to actually repair the tendons, ligaments, cartilage that, are, that have been injured. And they could be injured for like 10, 20 years without realizing or just... They reach the point where they're not healing as well, yeah. and people like you sprain an ankle, you, your ankles bum for the, you know for right. as long as you play. Right, I and see so that. in this case, it just gives your body another chance to begin where you left off. Yeah, I mean, for, I know for me, if I get a good massage, I wake up the next day and I'm mentally feeling good because I yeah. feel better in my body. I'm in right. flow, my spine is moving. And one thing yeah. that I, I remember reading, I think it was a, a Chinese proverb that talked about the spine. It said the this uh, uh, unhealthy spine ages you or something like that, you know, like a y- yeah. young spine is a young person. Right, right. I literally move my every t- the day I shower. Yeah. I move my spine left and right to get the blood flow right. going, because if I don't, it feels stiff. Yeah. Right. And and that wasn't something that I felt ten right. years ago. <laughs> so I'm like, it's not oh. aging when you actually feel stiff. You are getting older. <laughs> oh Jesus, Jesus, man! I gotta listen. I gotta come directly. I'm going straight to Pasadena ASAP. I'm gonna come see you now. Since we went through two years ago, three years ago now, this COVID, the whole COVID experience, long COVID is now the thing that a lot of doctors have been talking about. A lot of people suffer with long COVID. Do you see it in your clinic? What's helping and what's happening with it? Yeah, we, we see it quite a bit. Um, really, like, the underlying physiology or mechanism of long COVID, for what I've seen is that there's other lingering pathogens that they've had that might have been dormant all along that are all turned up again. So the, the common thread I've seen is there's mold in the picture of those guys. There's Epstein-Barr virus. There's parasites. They're just all brought out to the surface from after getting COVID. Whoa. And, and people are suffering... Went or after getting COVID with all of this, it's su- like everything surfacing. we talked about, but all in one go. Whoa. So the anxiety, uh, hair loss, fatigue, just constant fatigue. That's the biggest one. And they can't focus. They can't even do work for like more than an hour or two without uh, getting winded. Mm-hmm. So we've seen that. And what's helped to turn around the most is the use of the laser device. So the intravenous laser activates various things that actually neutralize any leftover viruses, other pathogens, including some of the fungal and parasitic activity. And then it energizes and recharges the mitochondria that have been damaged from all of the viruses and insult to the body. That's really so, powerful stuff too, yeah, to think about. Really cool and long stuff, COVID, yeah. so many people are right now suffering with it. Yeah. You know, they've had the COVID and it's right. just there. It's, it's not just one there. drug to treat it. That's the, that's the difficult part about it, you know. Right. So you can't just undo. It's not like a switch. You can't put it back on the box now. Mm-hmm. When that's open, you have to deal with all those other things that you might have not had to really think about before. What's this hot thing everyone's talking about, neural therapy? So that goes in the realm of fixing old injuries, which can be scars, traumas, uh, basically blocked energy. So if you have a scar, it actually blocks the flow of energy through the body. So if you, most people understand Chinese medicine to a point where there's meridians, those are like highways of energy flowing through the body. So you have, you have a scar, it's actually going to interfere with the flow of energy going up and down that chain. So if the energy is not flowing, the body will find a way around it, but it's not going to be very efficient. Mm. So you might have you know, physical pain, you might have just slower energy functions, slower organ functions, um, and things get trapped in those scars too. So you can have viruses, toxins, even emotions locked in those scars. Wow, and through neural therapy, you can bust open the scar. Yeah, so basically it's a very simple uh, procaine injection, which is local anesthesia, and you can add some homeopathics in there, but the actual act of injecting in there, you let the body know that there's an injury in there and it can resolve and clear up that scar and form healthier collagen afterwards. Amazing. And you just open up whatever is blocked in there. Right it's there just amazing well. technology yeah. out there. Is there, do tattoos affect the meridians too? Oh yeah, because you're using a needle, you're actually in, injuring the tissues and you form the pigmentation. So not to mention the heavy metals behind there, but you have the actual injury to the fascia that's there. And so mm-hmm. then the fascia can actually get adhered it's kind of like you know sticky saran wrap. It gets stuck to each other, and if it's not really properly released, then you've got a locked area of, of actual connective tissue. Oh boy, I got yeah, a lot of tattoos, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. we, we, I'm gonna have to see you over a year or yeah. something. But uh, thank you for that. Thank of you. Course, that was yeah. really important information. Where can people find you? Where can people come see you? So our, our website is uh, www.opthealthwellness.com. 
I'm on Instagram, but I don't really post as much. It's too busy helping people out. But I, I plan on it at some point. That's cool. Um, but the handle is uh, Dr. Clement Lee, and mostly, yeah, mostly through those avenues. You need yeah. a social media manager, man. And that's what I do need. I yeah. got, I got some people for you. We'll okay. talk off we'll air. Talk about that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for coming on the show, yeah, man. Sure. I love yeah. the holistic approach that you take from the integrative, from the futuristic medicine that we yeah. have, all of these awesome devices, to really the fundamentals of what make us naturopathic doctors, man. You cover it all. Uh, I'm excited to try some of these therapies. Yeah. I'm going to put it out so everyone can see all the fun stuff that's happening Sweet. in the clinic, man. Yeah. I appreciate you. You know, you're always welcome back. You're only a few hour, an hour, or maybe an hour no, and a half an hour away. Today. Yeah, that's less than an yeah. hour. Cool. Thank you, man, for coming. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm so happy to be here. Okay, how many of you have gels on your nails? This show was done because it was a huge demand, not only from Instagram, but my producer here, Leia, and some of the women in the studio were asking me to do this gel show. So admittedly, this show was a little bit of a learning curve for me. I heard about the gel phenomenon, but I didn't know how popular it was. I mean, people love them. And they've gotten actually really popular over the past few years. I think it was around 2015 they started really popping off. Now I heard about them, but we want to talk a little bit more about the concerns when it comes to gels. Now today, I'm going to talk about what is a gel manicure, what are some of the risks, and what are some recommendations to reduce the risks. Now a gel manicure, according to Seventeen Magazine, and I never in this show's history ever thought I would cite Seventeen Magazine, but here it goes to show you to expect the unexpected. A gel manicure, according to Seventeen Magazine, is a service that uses a gel-based polish and requires a 10-minute UV or LED light to cure the polish and lock it into your nails. Gel polish is more durable than regular polish. And while regular polish can chip away as quickly as like two to three days, gel typically lasts chip-free for weeks, which goes a long way, right? More durable, longer lasting two to four weeks with proper care, and apparently even has more shine. You know, some of you may attest to that. It's a little more expensive at 25 to 40 bucks before tip. But my biggest concern, and I already, when I was reading about the application, was the UV part. And lo and behold, as I started researching more, we learned more about the risk of using UV light with gels. Now, the biggest part, again, is that the light is necessary part of this process, and that's the major issue, especially if you're on the gel nails vibe, or even more concerned if you're doing them year after year after year. Now, we know what direct UV light is going to do to humans. We know it can damage skin, it can break down collagen, it can reduce elasticity in the skin, it can lead to premature aging, it can increase your risk of skin cancer. It's a group one carcinogen, meaning there is sufficient evidence this exposure can cause cancer to humans. Now, through the years, there have been multiple meta-analyses that have shown the direct relationship between skin cancer and UV-emitting tanning devices, much like the curing device used for gels. So it's no surprise. So when it comes to the risk of using gels on your nails, on January 17th, 2023, a new study in Nature Communications Journal was released, and it was called DNA Damage and Somatic Mutations in Mammalian Cells After Irradiation with Nail Polish Dryer. Now, this was a cellular study which would be most appropriate. You don't want to create a randomized human study to see who gets cancer and doesn't get cancer. But there's been recent reports on melanoma and non-melanoma cancers of the nail and the hand due to UV exposures from gel manicures. Now, this study was helpful at showing us what exactly happens to mammalian cells when exposed to UVA radiation emitted by these nail polish dryers. So what did they find? Well, the radiation causes a high level of reactive oxygen species that is leading to inflammation and potential DNA damage. And in this study, we saw just that, DNA damage. The study saw elevated levels of the marker of DNA damage and mitochondrial dysfunction, 80HDG. And there's a dose-dependent increase in genetic mutations with gel UV light exposure, meaning the more UV light exposure you get from gel manicures, the more you're going to create genetic mutations in the DNA. This is a cool study because I identified the exact DNA damage and somatic mutation profile coming from this nail polish dryer. Now, it's not only the UV light. I have another concern with gels, and it's the nail polish that's used. 
Now, for the sake of this show, though, I really wanted to focus on the UV light. You know, you think about it, you get your gels, you put your hand under the gel manicure dryer, the nail polish dryer, the curation device. And what you're doing, as we've seen in the cellular study, it's creating reactive oxygen species, right? And those species are creating inflammation. And we know in a dose-dependent manner, more DNA damage in the body. Now you couple that with what is used in the nail polish. Now the nail polish used for gels is actually not as bad as acrylic, but I'm gonna stop here and here's why. Next week, I'm gonna go over nail polish as a whole. All the nail polishes out there, acrylic, gels, and I'm gonna go over the best and worst brands. So I want you to stay tuned for that. But for now, what is my final take on gels? Well, aside from even the polish that they use, the chemicals that you're exposed to, the UV curation is a big problem for me, especially if you're doing gels over and over and over. If you do them once a year, okay, you're fine. But if this is part of your lifestyle and you're really dead set on utilizing gel manicures, you got to protect yourself. Now, there's different ways you can do that. You can add, whenever you get actually gels, add SPF to your hands, especially your fingers, all around your fingertips. And actually, one doctor I had read about recommended that you get dark colored opaque gloves with the nails cut off as a protection device. Even better, if you're gonna get gels, put some lotion on your hands, put some gloves on, you can cut the nails off and then you can get your gels. But again, I just don't think you should be doing this every month in general anyway. But ultimately, I don't like gels regardless, even if it was non-toxic nail polish, the UV part of it is a big problem. But I want you to sit tight and check out next week's best and worst list. Because if you paint your nails, if you're using nail polish, you want to make sure this is the best one and you want to make sure you're doing it in the healthiest way, especially if it's part of your life. So stay tuned. And that, my friends, is my take on gel nail polish. So before we close our time together this week, don't forget, we got the Heal Thyself merch. HTS.today, you got organic, sustainable, stylish, clean, the best of the best merch out there. Get some for yourself. Get some for anyone who loves the show. If you're aligned with it or someone in your life is, get it for yourself or someone else. Please support the show by rating, reviewing, and subscribing. Every single one means so much to me. My eyes see it. I appreciate it so much. Check it out. Next week, we're coming with some more fire. I hope you enjoyed the show. Have a wonderful, beautiful rest of your day. <laughs>